Hello. Hello. Today I'm going to finally replace these cable anchors with a bigger size and more reinforcement. And if you've already seen my other video called the Old Ham Tilt Tower, this all would look familiar because that's where I was complaining about these being too small, too weak. And these are the very same anchors after they've been removed. And this clearly shows that they have been bending and being distorted by the force of the cable pulling on it. Now this one's the most obvious, but if you look, all four of them have this same bent side on it. The side that's being pulled by the cable. So that's one reason why I've wanted to upgrade these eye bolt anchors. But another important reason is that this one eye bolt here is the one you'd normally use to raise and lower the tower. It's a tilt tower. And the winching force is very strong when first lifting off the ground, pulling in this direction. But this eye bolt is too weak. So I was thinking of adding in some reinforcement gusset here, welded in to beef up this eye bolt. So then I could trust it to have the tower be lifted from here with a winch. So then that would be the second thing I would want to do to upgrade this. So, about these anchors being too small, in the other video I said that they were 5 sixteenths and wish they'd been 3 eighths. Well, they really were 3 eighths. It's just that it's a undersized 3 eighths. So I'm going to take them on up to half. Replace these with larger half inches. The next thing to do is to get this tower down so I can do the surgery on those upper anchor eye bolts. And you might be wondering how I'm connecting the winch cable to this if I think that this eye bolt's not strong enough. Well, I went down a little lower on the tower and connected the winch cable directly to this spot. It's a nice strong spot. But the problem there is that each and every time I want to lower this tower, I've got to climb up the tower to physically install the winch cable. Then again, when I raise it back up, I have to climb up here again to take this winch cable off. And sure, it's a thrill, but I'm getting older and I don't want to go up there if I don't have to. Okay, she's down, but I can't do cutting, welding, sparking stuff out here in this field or I'm going to start a wildfire. So we're going to remove this upper section and bring it back to a safer place to work on it. But it's been over 10 years since this was taken apart and it's gotten rusty and I couldn't get them apart. So I'm showing here with a reenactment how I pried the top section away from the rest of it. Of course, I removed those bolts and I did spray for a few days ahead of time with WD-40, etc. Now, I didn't get any video showing this removal, so I'm just running the installation backwards to show kind of how it went. <laughs> Here we are back at the shop, safe place where I can do sparks and grinding and not start a wildfire. This is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to cut all these off, clear the deck. Now grind these down flush. A little sanding. So we got the decks cleared off and now we can start installing the new bigger eye bolts. Here's the new one compared to the old one, and it's an eighth of an inch bigger diameter. It's longer, and it's also a closed eye bolt. It's already been welded together there. The old ones, I had to weld that together myself, and it's a little tricky. It takes some precise welding. Simple and easier just to order closed eye bolts. The first eye bolt I want to put in is this one, and this is how the old one went on there, but since the cable is always pulling off in this direction, why not have the eye bolt slant like that in direct opposition to the pull of the cable? 
So that means I won't be using the old hole. I'm going to have to drill a new one back here. My same routine. Start off with a little pilot drill and work my way up to the final size. Now here's what's different. In order to have the eye bolt slant the way I want, I'm going to have to make the hole slant too. Tilt the drill over that direction and have it chew the hole out into an oblong angle. So now the eye bolt can be installed with this tilted direction. Okay, for this one, I'm going to use one of the old holes. And it's the same process. Slant the hole gradually over to the angle I want the eye bolt to travel in there. And there's plenty of area there to weld the eye bolt onto the pipe. And also it'd be stronger to turn this eye bolt so that the closed welded part is here. Now this looks just like more of the same, but it's actually the opposite angle because this is going to have one of the eye bolts from the other side just poke its very end through. So it's slanted in the opposite direction. So that's how that's going to go. And we're going to do this one the same way. It'll need a hole on the other side too. But you might have noticed that these aren't perfectly in the middle of where they're going through because they're going to crisscross each other inside the pipe. And so if, if I'm not installing these a little bit offset from each other, they're going to crash into each other inside. So one a little left, one a little right, one a little below. Here's a view of it all finished and painted and you can see this one here is a little lower than the rest. That's how I got it to go in and across and not crash into these other two. It's a little lower down the tower. Okay, it's not really flash photography, but it's just arc welding. Lots of flashing lights. If that bothers some people, they could skip ahead to the time mark shown there. I did dull down the brightness some. So this is stainless steel arc welding rod 308L. And the eye bolt is stainless steel too. But the tower and the other metal pieces are just mild steel. Now this type of stainless steel welding is more likely to crack across the weld joint if I'm welding on metal that hasn't been preheated. And that's especially true if the parts are starting to be trapped and restricted by all the welding that's going on. So when I get to this part where I'm going to add this gusset in, I'm starting to restrict and trap the free movement of these parts when I weld them. So there's likely some excessively high stress built up in that weld joint. So when I was finished with this later on, I looked and noticed that there was actually a crack along this weld right here on one side. And that's because I didn't have these parts preheated. I should have heated them up to four or five hundred degrees before I welded. And that's specifically for that gusset piece where the metal pieces are being trapped and restricted. It's more likely to have a crack happen there. Whereas these parts I'm doing now, this is more open. There's not so much danger of cracking. So to deal with the crack, I can grind out the area where the crack is, preheat the area, and then do another weld there. Okay, all the shop work's done. Let's put this baby back together. And here's a close-up of the new work and nice paint job. Cables are put back on. And I am really liking that top eye bolt there with the gusset. It looks really strong now. I'm totally going to trust it to have the winching lift this tower and tilt it up and tilt it down. So I just got to show this old view of how it was one more time. Remember, I was hoping that I could put a gusset in there of some sort and make it stronger so that I wouldn't have to climb the tower every time to install this winch cable here. But not anymore. Now I can hook the winch cables on the end of this tower cable and do it on the ground. No more climbing the tower necessary. For those of you who've seen all my other videos, you recognize I'm using a lot of old stock footage, but you know, it's a good shot of raising the tower, lowering the tower, so why not use it? And it's always good to see the old suicide clutch winch 
performing. Ta -da. To disconnect and reconnect this winch cable, it's down here on the end of this tower cable. So it's right there on the ground. And then connect this cable to the ground anchor. We're back in business. Oh yeah. So I thought it'd be fun to show the power coming in from the turbine into my home off-grid battery system. And this number here, of course, is the wattage coming in. And the other number there is the voltage of my batteries. And whenever that gets up to around 58.5, you'll hear a click. And that's a shunt solenoid diverting the power away from my system to a dummy load so that it won't overcharge my batteries. And then you'll hear that solenoid do a softer click as it lets go down around the lower voltage of 55. And sometimes the numbers don't match the clicking because the refresh rate isn't the fastest on that meter. 